Hi guys, I'm Sean. And I'm Lainey. And this is a video about how not to be a bad pilgrim on the Camino. So we've hiked the Camino twice. We've done the Camino Frances in 2017. We did the Camino Norte in 2019. <laughs> and we met a lot of lovely people of all ages from all over the world hiking the Camino for their own reasons. It's full of wonderful people. That's why we keep doing it. 99.99999% of people, just the best. However, some people don't know how to act. So they're either gross, they're rude, or they're inconsiderate or disrespectful to the Camino. Mm -hmm. so, and especially when we're in a place that's really crowded, there's a lot of people yeah. and you're all forced to stay in like the same places. You start to kind of see the same people. There's just a couple common courtesies that make the experience just so much nicer for everybody. Yeah. So don't be a bad pilgrim. So we know, we know this is a once in a lifetime trip for a lot of people, but that doesn't mean there aren't any rules. <laughs> so here's our list of a few behaviors and things that you can avoid if you want to be a better pilgrim. Number one, don't smell. <laughs> a lot of these places are, you know, large bed bunk rooms with 30 or 50 or 10 people in them. Some of them are really small with bad ventilation. We all smell, we're all hiking, we get it. That is no excuse to not shower every single day. Get in the shower, you monster. I don't care how late you got in, take a shower. I don't care if the water is now cold. Take a shower. Ooh, a cold shower is nice. I like a cold shower. <laughs> so keeping with the keeping your body clean and not smelling like a gross pilgrim. Number two, wash your clothes. As often as possible, wash your shirt. Your socks. Your underwear. You don't have to do everything every day, but you gotta do a little bit. Don't be that pilgrim who your clothes are so smelly that someone takes your bag, dumps it out, and forces you to clean it all. Because we've seen that happen. Yeah. The smelliest person we've ever met. Camino, Camino tangent. We met a man that we thought might have died. It was so bad. Everyone in the room was like, oh no. And someone tried to close the window because it was too cold outside. And a woman bolted upright and was like, if you close that window, I will kill you. And this man was from a country that wasn't, that wasn't Spain or the US. Um, and one of his compatriots walked past him on the Camino the next day. She stopped turned around, pulled him over, and was like, you won't do this to, to our reputation. Because you're disgracing our people. <laughs> she like made him bathe. So that, was, that, was a, that was a rough one. Wash everything Wash often. Everything. <laughs> Rule number three is, is, yes, please take a shower every day, but keep it short. Don't be in there for 20 minutes. A lot of times there's limited space or limited hot water. So keep your showers. Two or three minutes. Short. So the Alberge is a special place. It's, it's where everyone comes at the end of a long day. Everyone's tired, everyone wants to sleep. Some people wanna talk and stare and share stories. But there's one thing that you should never ever do and that's eat in bed. If you wanna have a snack, if you made a weird sloppy plate of pasta, don't bring it to bed. It's not okay. It's just too smelly, there's too many bugs. Don't, don't be that person. Yeah. Another thing you should never do in the albergue, or at least on your bed, is pick at your blisters. Do not pick your blisters where everyone can see it. Yeah. And then force them to watch you like, oh, I can't oh, everyone, everyone gets blisters. We don't need to hear your sob story about yeah. your blisters that they're worse than everyone else's because everyone gets bad blisters. Yeah. Do it in the bathroom, do it outside, you know, maybe do it in, in the corner of the room facing a wall. <laughs> Like, please don't so, do that in front of everybody. A quick note about blisters. <laughs> blisters happen, especially in the beginning of the Camino. You have to take care of them. It's important to take care of them. Please, oh sweet God, <laughs> don't do it in your bunk bed on the top bunk. Oh no, God. Or like sit in the middle of the floor, like soaking your feet yeah. in Epsom salt and then pull your foot out and like pick at your blisters in front of everybody. Lainey's foot. We know that this isn't always possible, but, but try to be discreet. Some people treat them like they're war wounds and they want to tell a story about it. I don't want to hear it. Unless I've asked you about your blisters, <laughs> don't show me your blisters. And don't show me a photo of your blister <laughs> that I didn't ask for. That was, that was, that happened and that was not okay. A lot, that's happened a lot. Like, look, look, and I'm like, did I ask that? <laughs> There's a reason I don't Google certain words. I don't want to see that stuff. Do not dispense your amateur medical advice.
There's a lot of armchair physicians on the Camino swapping advice and cure-alls and try this lotion and here's the thing. And in, da, 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 da. Unless someone asks, don't give them that advice. Yeah. Or if you actually are a medical provider, put that at the front of your advice. Yeah, if you really do need help, go to a pharmacy. Mm -hmm. So green signs with the cross on them. And the pharmacists are super helpful for all sorts of ailments. You can just describe what you're feeling and they'll get something for you. And oftentimes someone there will at least speak maybe a little bit of English yeah. or you can kind of use Google Translate or to you get can some just, words. You can just walk in and they'll see you walk in and be like, oh, yeah. Oh, you need leukoplastic. Yeah. Look at your poor body like yeah. dying and crumbling with your tendonitis. So leave, leave, your, leave your amateur advice at home. When you get to the Alberta, take your boots off there's usually a sign where they make you take your boots off but your boots are dirty your boots smell like butt don't bring your boots ever into the room where you sleep where other people sleep it is not okay no one will steal them people don't want your gross shoes please leave them outside nobody wants your boots guys <laughs> nobody wants your boots no matter how fancy your footwear yeah. is no one's gonna take those yeah they have enough to carry already. When you are in the albergue, you have a couple of things that are communal. One of them, probably the most important one, is the lights. Oh, yeah. So the lights are typically, in some places they go off automatically at 10 o'clock or 9 o'clock or 11 o'clock, whatever the curfew is, they're on a timer and there's nothing you can do about it. Sometimes it's kind of a, a weird vote of like everyone's kind of just in bed on their phones or reading and someone, some bold soul will just be like, lights out, and then six people are like, yeah. So if the lights go out, don't turn them back on. If you they're don't off. get to turn them back on, if you if you have something that you need to take care of, do it on your phone in the dark, or leave the space and go out to the kitchen area or go outside. And so the same goes for the mornings. Yeah, if you are the first person awake, you don't get to turn those lights on. You have to wait till the majority of the room is awake before turning those lights on. But if you're the last person in bed every morning, the lights will go on before you leave. Mm -hmm. So don't be that person who's just in bed till 10 a.m. getting kicked out and the 30 other people in that room yeah. got dressed in the dark. Try to be as aware of other people as you can. If 10 people are all making noise and kind of ruffling around in their bags at 6 30 turn the lights on you know what you can do to avoid turning the lights on in the morning is lay your clothes out on the end of your bed the night before so they're ready to grab so you can get dressed in your sleeping bag Lady i do that pro tip. Uh, <laughs> then you're never like rustling through your bag to get yeah. your stuff and guess what that laundry is clean so it can be on your bed because you washed it the day before Again, you need to dry your clothes. Sometimes it's raining or you know the, all the clotheslines are taken and you, your stuff is still a little damp. You can hang things off of your bed, but try not to take over someone else's space. Again, play by the rules. You get a bunk bed, I get a bunk bed. Don't put your stuff on my bed. Yeah, and if you're hanging it off the bed, please make sure it's a clean something that you're hanging off that bed. And if you're doing laundry, don't do the laundry in the albergue sink. There's always a laundry place in an albergue that has a bigger sink so you don't get water everywhere. And there's sometimes soap there too, and you can yeah. share soap with people, but only in the rare instance that there's nowhere to do your laundry. I mean, maybe then do it in the sink, but try to just wash your socks and underwear, but really find somewhere to do your laundry. And then you can hang it on your bunk if there's nowhere else. When you get to an albergue, more and more these days, they are making you leave your backpack in a locker. The rise of bed bugs has gotten kind of out of control. So, don't do the thing, even if they don't make you leave your bag in another room, don't do the thing where you put your bag on the bed and just explode it everywhere and everything smells and, and everyone gets really nervous that like, that's how bed bugs spread is by putting your stuff onto the bed. Keep your stuff on the floor, keep it in another room as best you can and don't be part of the problem. Don't be a bad pilgrim and spread bed bugs. If you know you have bed bugs, get rid of them right away. Yeah, Go I don't to, understand that. Yeah, Go to a laundromat. You got some bites. Don't do anything that day. Yeah. If you have bed bugs, take care of them immediately. Wash everything you can in an actual laundry machine with super hot, high heat. Kill, kill them. Please, take, please kill them. Take a zero day. Yeah. Buy garbage bags if you can't do a laundry and get some bug spray and put everything in that garbage bag and put the the poison in there and just leave everything sitting there overnight. Yeah. That's the one time you should probably pay for your own private room so that you're not dealing, making everyone else deal with your problem. Here's an easy one and I don't know why this needs to be on the list. Stop littering. 
If you have a power bar, put the wrapper in your pocket. There's trash cans later. There's so many people on the trail mm -hmm. and no one wants to see your garbage. It's not that difficult to bring it with you. Just bring a little bag that you can put it or stuff it in a pocket of your backpack yeah. or in your pockets. And likewise, don't leave toilet paper on the trail or off the trail where you thought was a nice place to pee mm -hmm. because that is disgusting and will not biodegrade. And if it does, it just takes a long time and wild animals often smell it and will dig it up if you try to bury the, put the toilet paper. So if you're going to use toilet paper and pee on the trail, put it in a bag. <laughs> Make yourself have like a little Ziploc bag of your pee supplies. I'm serious. For all my women out there, mostly, this is what we have to do. And when your pee supplies like bag every day, you empty the dirty toilet paper. Guys, don't poop. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> uh, this next one is more of a cultural thing. Uh, not everyone speaks Spanish on the Camino. Obviously, people are coming from all over the world. Germany and Japan and the US and, and New Zealand. Learn a little bit of Spanish. It is not hard these days to download an app and practice for like a week. Un poco. <laughs> A little. We talked about just a few helpful <laughs> phrases in one of our other videos about how to make reservations at albergues. A little bit of Spanish goes a long, long way. And it just shows that you're invested in the local communities that you're walking through instead of expecting everything to come to you. Yeah, you can try to learn a few words of the foods that you like to eat, like huevos for eggs. Those little things really, really help, especially if you want to know how to say a glass of water, vaso de agua. So like if you want a glass of water at a bar, you can totally ask for that in vaso de agua. Do your dishes. If you are cooking in the albergue, do your dishes right away, maybe even before you eat, so that someone else can use those pots and cook. Yeah, or even just ask, hey, is anyone else having spaghetti? Do you want to throw it in here? Can I share? Because there's only one burner that works. Get some extra wine. We love the two euro Baby. bottles of wine and they're great to share and a way to make new friends. More and more people are walking the Camino with their phones, they're taking pictures, they're using their phones to make reservations and like read the guidebooks. That's awesome. Phones are super helpful. Don't be on your phone all day. And if you are on your phone for a reason, try not to crush the very weak Wi-Fi signal that everyone else is sharing uh, as they're trying to like, you know, send messages home. So everyone has a story to share on the Camino. However, not everyone wants to hear your entire life story. So sometimes if you're walking with new friends, listen more than you talk. Mm -hmm. That's just good life advice. And if you do say Buen Camino, mean it. Because we all are there just to have a really Buen Camino. <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> good Camino. Good walk. Like... <laughs> We're there to have a good walk. We're there for a good walk. I love it. So that's those are our... 20 tips. I don't know how many tips we said. Those are our tips for how not to be a bad pilgrim on the Camino de Santiago. Good luck. Don't be a monster. Don't be a bad pilgrim. Yeah.